Drew and Stu are on the air. Ready? Ready? Whether you're fading with Drew or riding with Cam, this is the place to get your weekly NFL picks. Presented by Sports Interaction, Canada's sportsbook. Everything you got, let's go. Hello and welcome to week 15 of the Drew and Stu podcast. I'm Drew Livingstone, that's Cam Stewart. Cam, last week we told the viewers we would look at the reverse line movement in two of those games where it was 80% on one side, but the spread was dropping really fishy and not surprisingly well surprisingly to me because i was on the wrong side of both i didn't listen to the alarm bells <laughs> the other side won cam uh when 80 percent is on one side and you see reverse line movement you just got to go against it doesn't matter what the teams are you said it man this game it's uh, nfl betting is so damn tough and sometimes you're right sometimes you're wrong but i'll tell you drew over years of doing this stuff when the line's fishy you either take the other side or lay off the game if it scares mm-hmm. you and you know on my sunday show on the fan i switched uh I like Seattle, they're my team, and then I switched to Carolina as one of my top picks all week because I was just staring at it. So things change during the week, and Jacksonville wins outright against Tennessee. So you're right. Sometimes if you smell it and it's a little bit too fishy, you know, don't bet the game or go on the other side. Yeah, it's almost like it's a trap. It's like we said, it's Vegas trying to get your money, and then they they get your money, and then they're laughing. They're just counting the bills as you lose your your game outright, not even just in the spread, outright. Um (laughs) Absolutely insane. Um, Update for the viewers. So starting this week, we'll be doing two shows. uh, The spread picks on Tuesdays, as usual, where we go through every single game. And then our best bets, props, and uh, some little fun anytime touchdown bets will be on Friday mornings released on the SDPN YouTube channel and wherever you find your audio podcasts. Uh, Once again, this show and that show is powered by Sports Interaction, Canon only, 19 plus. Please play responsibly. Cam, it's cool to get two shows a week now so we can update anything we want to change. Like you said, you updated your Carolina pick. We can do any little updates on Friday morning as well as some fun props. And everything we make, the props, the spreads, our best bets, will be available on Sports Interaction for the viewers to bet. You'll have a Drew and Stu landing page, Drew's parlays and bets, Cam's parlays and bets. So bet alongside us uh, so we can all win a bunch of money. How about that, Cam? That'd be fantastic, Drew. And if the Cleveland Browns and Houston Texans didn't exist in the league, isn't it ironic, Drew? I told you the Texans, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. You almost beat Dallas outright as 17 point dogs, but you can't do anything you, against yeah, Deshaun you Watson. Cover for us the week game. before. Yeah, excited. Welcome to the NFL, buddy. This league drives you nuts. Yeah. And then your Cleveland Browns got absolutely smoked. Um, yep. Stefanski's first loss against the Cat- Cats. I saw. Yeah, that's... Eight and one against Cats now, Drew. I guess they were due. It was that's pretty <laughs> funny. Um, all right, well, let's get into this week, Cam. Yes. Brock Purdy and the San Francisco 49ers going to Seattle to take on Geno Smith. Geno in that offense hasn't looked great the last few weeks, Cam. Ken Walker being out is a big blow. It's still not confirmed whether or not he'll be back. They better hope he's back because they're going to need him. Um, Cam, San Fran, three and a half point road favorites. 70% of the public is on San Fran. Where are you going in this one? This is a real big problem because Seattle is falling apart big time. They are who yeah. they thought they we were. Drew, we told you. I told you. In this draft, they have a bunch of rookies, and they're breaking down. That's the thing. They've had a great draft. Seattle's going to be a good team of the future, but these guys are kids out there, and they're getting pummeled. Teams can do whatever they want against them. They can pound the rock. I lean San Francisco in this spot, but you know, going against home dogs is probably stupid. But how do you bet on Seattle right now? They're getting killed. They're losing outright to teams like Carolina. And as for San Francisco, uh, 9-4, and four, this team is smooth right now. Brock Purdy's playing great, and that's the thing, Drew. They can cover with defense. Yeah. They might force Geno Smith into a pick six or something like that in the game. I hate the fact that the public is on San Francisco, but right now it's San Francisco or nothing. I think the 49ers probably win by a touchdown. Cam, I'm a big proponent of a team struggles one week, they bounce back the next week. It's just San Fran's just been on a roll since they got Christian McCaffrey. They've only lost one game. Um, So I have to go with San Fran and the public in this one. Uh, Would I be shocked if Seattle pulls off the upset? No. No. Um, But San Fran is too short a spread. I thought it would be like five and a half. The fact that it's only three and a half smells a bit fishy. I think it could grow by Thursday uh, to maybe four and a half. I don't think it gets higher than that. But um, yeah, I will be with you on san fran all right the colts cam going to minnesota to take on the vikings our first case of reverse line movement almost 80 percent of the public is on minnesota and yet the line has dropped from minnesota minus five to minnesota minus four everyone saw the vikings lose to the lions and now everyone is going back on them to absolutely smoke the colts well not smoke them beat them by four cam alarm bells going off 80 percent on one side (laughs) i don't even care anymore we're going with the colts baby uh i hate it uh but i'm going with it i don't care I'm with you, Drew. Uh, I, it's actually funny. I just taped a show, and I took Minnesota, and now the minute I took Minnesota, you know the voice in my head? Come on, Cam. You've been gambling a long time. You're an yep, old guy. Yeah, the alarm bells. Don't, don't fall for it, man. So you know what? I'm on the horseshoe as well. Here's the thing. Minnesota should rebound. 
uh, after that game against Detroit. I told you, man, this Lions team's on fire, Drew. But right now, you said it opens at five. It's four now. You know what? I could see a Minnesota win on like a field goal. They'll probably win this game by three and just not cover the number. Give me the horseshoe. Yeah. And like I said, Minnesota could smoke them. Uh, but just out of spite and out of all the gambling laws around, we've noticed all season, the 80% on one side, the alarm bells ringing. Even if we're wrong, the Colts is the right side to be on in this game, Cam. Yep. You're right, Drew. See, the NFL is a learning experience. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but more often than not, reverse line movement, go with the team that should have no chance or the public's betting against, because I'll tell you one thing, they'll probably, hey, you saw with Jacksonville, yeah. they might win outright. So just take the points. Moving on to the Baltimore Ravens, taking on the Cleveland Browns. Uh, listen, Cam, AFC North matchup, the Ravens hang on to that lead by a tiebreaker over the Bengals, so they need this win. The Browns are three-point favorites. We don't know if Lamar Jackson's going to play. We don't know if Huntley's going to play. It might be Anthony Brown out of Oregon, Cam, <laughs> uh, as quarterback for the Ravens. And if that's the case, you have to go Cleveland, right? No, you don't. I don't care who's quarterbacking. Drew Livingstone could be my quarterback, and I'm done really? betting on the Cleveland Browns. Oh, honest to God, this team makes me sick. Uh, like, I, I got to think you, Stefanski should win coach, worst coach of the year for their utilization <laughs> Over of the this year. Uh, honest to God, like when I watch Cleveland play, they're actually not a bad team. This coach is just a moron. Uh, their play calling is so bad. The coordinator's there. Anyway, here's the deal. We were on Baltimore last week against Pittsburgh, got the outright win. I'm going back. We're getting three points. I don't care if it's Anthony Brown. I think they could hang in this game. You know what? Bet on Cleveland. It's three. I, I just can't bet the Browns, Drew. If they win, it's probably by three. So I'm going to take the dog in Baltimore. I'll tell you one thing. I don't really have much confidence in this game, but give me the Raven. I'm going to go with you, Cam, on the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, I can't trust the Browns with my money right now. The way Deshaun Watson hasn't looked great. Uh, their defense hasn't looked great. Uh, I don't know. I just can't trust them, Cam. Can't trust no, them. And good, co good coaching staffs with backup quarterbacks, they win football games. We saw last week with Harbaugh. And listen, if Huntley's back, I love this pick right now. But even if he's not, if Lamar's not back, Anthony Brown, you know what? Just be serviceable. Just keep running the football. That's yep. all That's all Cleveland needs to do is run the football. And they just get away from Nick Chubb all of a sudden now late in the season. I don't know what Stefanski like, didn't watch Nick Chubb the first eight weeks of the season. They're just like, huh? Nick Chubb's the best back in football. Use no, they, they just don't use him. I know. It's, it's, it, to me, it's insane. Cleveland did this to themselves, Drew. They actually, and now what? Deshaun Watson is even better than Brissett. He's looked awful his first two games, like absolutely dreadful. So, you know well, what? And you then you get fourth and one deep shot, and you put Brissett in instead of the guy who's been playing quarterback yeah. the whole game, and he misses a wide open <laughs> touchdown. Yeah. I, I, that, that's what I'm talking about. Just everything Cleveland does, they're like that guy at the blackjack table on tilt hitting when they yeah. shouldn't staying when they like they're everything they do is wrong i'll take baltimore but i don't have a lot of confidence in this game all right well we've been on the same side in three for three games cam let's see if we're yep. on the same side in this one uh the buffalo bills hosting the miami dolphins on saturday night football uh, or is it thursday night football presented on saturday because of the naming rights it's like this weird thing where they still have the thursday graphics i'm always like what um the bills seven and a half point favorites at home uh, we saw the Jets get a backdoor cover against the Bills last week, which I was on the right side of, luckily, just because they yeah. decided to take a field goal with yes. a minute left. Um, yes. It was like, that That seemed a bit rigged. I don't know why. It's fourth and one, and you guys kick a field goal instead of from the six-yard line instead of going for a touchdown? It was ridiculous. Uh, like, you, you need six yards for a touchdown, then get the onside kick, uh, or, like, you know what I mean? To me, the math didn't add up to kick that field goal there. If it was like fourth and eight, I would understand yeah. it. If it's at the 28-yard line, you take the field goal. Not that close. That's what I'm talking about, Drew. These games are just – it drove me nuts because I actually had bills and teasers and money line parlays and stuff. I'm fine. But if I hit that bet, because you know what I mean? I laid 10 in that. The Bills should have covered in that game. But I blame Buffalo Bill, too. They took a safety in that game. They were horrible at the end of the game. They just It was almost like, let the Jets cover, but we'll win. It was yeah, ridiculous. that weather weather had a, played a factor for sure, but I agree with you. It's, it, was, it smelled a little fishy. But uh, where are you going you on this one, Cam? You, you want me to start this? Yeah, one? let's go. I, I'll tell you, Miami. Are you watching what's happening with Miami? Two I was, was on the Chargers apart. last week. Yes, yes, Drew. As I you know what, and I'll give myself. Sometimes I make stupid comments, but I told you this weeks ago. There's something wrong. I I, I started watching him, and he's missing throws right before that Niner game, and then the Niner game. It was bad. Here was here's what it is. Laying seven and a half with the Bills will probably burn your money. I laid 10 with them on the show we did last week against the Jets. Bad luck, results, who cares? I didn't win the bet. It was, the Jets covered. Mm -hmm. I'm taking the seven and a half with Buffalo. This is a revenge spot. The world's probably going to be on Miami because it looks like too many points. I think the Bills win this game by 14. I, I, I think they, but I'm really worried about the Buffalo's defense. They, they, they're very inconsistent, Drew, but I'm telling you, if they get any type of pressure on Tua, he will, he will fail in this game and Buffalo will cover. 
Uh, yeah, forecast calling for three inches of snow at game time, Cam. So oh, uh, I will take the I will take the Bills defense <laughs> against Tua. Listen, Miami quarterback, Alabama. There's no snow in Alabama. He's he's not good in cold weather. His arm is too weak for the snow and the wind. Um, so give me the Bills by seven and a half. I think they'll win this game, twenty-seven to seventeen. It'll be something like that. Yeah. Um, I just don't see the Miami offense performing in the snow, uh, in the outdoor weather. If it was a dome, I think I would take Miami in the points, but it's not. It's outside uh, where they're not used to these elements. So give me Buffalo Bill. That's four straight on the same side, Cam. Um, we're going to be 16 for 16. Let's see. Four um, over 16. Let's keep on going. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the Detroit Lions, Cam, going to New York, to the Meadowlands to take on the Jets. Lions, one-point road favorites. They've won five of their last six. Their only loss was because they screwed up the clock against Buffalo on Thanksgiving um, do you think they can keep the train rolling against the New York football jets? How do I get off Detroit drew? They've been my best friend and patting my wallet. They've made the, you know, so far in December. Thank you, Detroit lions. Like you become my favorite team. I'm a Seahawk fan, but I got to be honest with people. The lions are my team because they cover numbers. And Damn, are they money. the fourth best team in the NFC? I, like I what tell teams, you, what teams you, you take over them right now? I, I don't know. Dallas and San Fran. I can't yes. think of another. Yeah, I, I'm with you. Like, I like Detroit. And the thing is, all these people who talked about golf, are you, uh, golf, are you nuts? The guy runs that off. It's amazing. He was, he's I will say, though, he, on the road, golf has been bad. Like, at home, it's like care, 20 Drew. touchdowns to two. I don't care. Watch that game against Minnesota. He's putting balls in windows. He's th- his passes are perfect. He's dealing with pressure, dim- dumping the ball off. He has done a great job. And as we talked about the Detroit young players, Aiden Hutchison from Michigan, and all those young studs are getting better all the time. Here's the deal. The Jets got a great defense. You know, Detroit favorite on the road. But you know what? How do I get in front of the Lions right now? Give me the, give me Detroit. All they got to do is win this game. I'll take Detroit. Yeah, uh, man. So hard. I want to take the Jets just because their defense is very, very good. Um, I think this might be a shootout, Cam. I, I don't know. I could see it being like 27, 24. Like, um, I like the over. The 44 and a half is too short of a number for me. So if I'm betting this game, it's that. It's The total is too low. But I'll go with you on the lines here. I can't get in front of that freight train right now. Dan Campbell hasn't playing well. Uh, Jameson Williams is back. Their offense looks very explosive. Swift seems to be finding another gear. Um, and the Jets, they need this win. They both need the win. So I'm going to go with Detroit. Though Goff has struggled on the road this season, he's been way better at home. I got to trust in the Lions, uh, surprisingly, on the road here. So that's five for five, Cam. Yeah. Um, I yeah, think we're we'll, mystery think... bag man. He's, he's, he's gone for a break. Yeah. <laughs> I got his picks here. It just we'll, doesn't we'll, matter. We'll, we'll call you when we need you, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. The Chiefs can go into Houston and take on the Texans. Yeah. The Texans should have won that game outright against Dallas, but they blew it at the end. Um, KC 14 point favorites on the road. Mahomes now up to 11 interceptions. Um, they should have blown that game against the Broncos. If Russell Wilson doesn't get hurt, they probably <sighs> lose that game Blow 27 point lead. You start. Um, I'm going to go. Uh, this one's tough. Everyone's, I don't, I don't know, Cam. This one's real tough. I'm going to flip a coin. I'm going to go Houston Texans. Give me the 14 points. Just uh, their defense played great in the battle of Texas. Didn't play great. I well, did play great against Cleveland. Actually, it was their, their offense that threw got a touchdown score against them. So give me Houston Casey struggling lately um, to, to win these big spreads. So give me Houston. I'm going to shock I, you in this one. You're not crazy. Look at these teams. You want to talk about money burners? I've told you this all year, Drew. Kansas City is yep. worse than the Texans against the spread, people. They are two, <laughs> seven, crazy. and one. Could be two and one ATS, depending on earlier what number you are. It's three, three and nine seven and one game. It's three, nine and one. It's worse yeah. than what you said. Oh, yeah. Sorry, sorry. That's yeah, that's the last set. Three, nine and one. You're right. And the Texans are five, seven, one. Thank you, Drew. That's my mistake. Here's the deal, though. Enough is enough. Anthony Reed and these guys are gonna have to show up in a game. And I think he's getting sick and tired of it. I saw the press conference. They're going to blow somebody out soon. And you know what, Houston, you played your great, great game <laughs> against a state rival. I think Kansas City walks in there and wins this game by 28 points, finally does what they're supposed to do. But you know what? I don't have confidence in it because Kansas City, all they do is burn money. I told you they're not that team before with Tyreek Hill, the explosive offense. They're methodical and plotting. It works sometimes, but defenses can hang around, right, Drew? Ben, don't break. But this is the week where I think Mahomes and, and this team get it together and blow Houston out. I'm going to lay 14 the- begrudgingly. This might be one of the games where I switch on our Friday show just because yeah, I'm not confident in it. But uh, right now, I just Casey's not covering Cam. So I mean, it's not like Houston's oh, covering either, though. They're one and nine in their last ten cut against the spread. Both both burn money. Uh, yeah. Game. Okay. So give me yeah, give me the Houston Texans and mystery tiebreaker man is on. Who do you think every week he's on this team? So the Kansas City Kansas Chiefs. City. 
Yeah, we didn't need to ask. Like, there's no point even. Mystery Bagman's got a real. No, he shouldn't even be a. No, why are you just get Mystery Bagman? Why don't you go buy him a Holmes jersey? He, I love hundred percent. <laughs> yeah, uh, we know what team you really cheer. Yeah, for, we know who you like. It might, it might be Come KC. <laughs> yeah. um, all right, the Steelers cam going to Carolina to take on the Panthers. Uh, the Panthers only one game back, and they have the tiebreaker on Tom Brady in the division now. Cam, uh, they're one and a half point favorites at home against Pittsburgh. Uh, I like Pittsburgh in the spot cam. I just think they're a better football team than Carolina. Despite Carolina beating Seattle last week, I think Carolina's can come back down to earth. People saw Carolina win. They might bet on them, but I think the Steelers are just a better football team overall. Uh, so give me the Pittsburgh Steelers in an upset. Drew, I have a crazy bet on Carolina winning that division when just before Darnold Ooh. came back, and I have to stick with it. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying I love the game. This game, to me, is literally a coin flip. Um, I'm, I'm going to take Carolina. You talk about movement. Carolina opened up at two and a half. It went down to one and a half. That's good news for your Pittsburgh bet, but I don't care. It's kind of personal, and I'm just going to ride these cats. I had them uh, switch my pick last week to Carolina outright against Seattle. They won outright. I think they're a good football team. You know what the one thing they are, Carolina is? Sorry, good football team's a stretch. They have a good defense. Yeah, so if Darnold does enough, I think they can win this game. All oh, It's minus one and a half. I like Carolina by a field goal. Give me those pesky cats, Drew. It wouldn't be a show if I didn't have a cat. Carolina's my cat. Done. Fair. Actually, fair. I have usually, the Lions too. Yeah, so he doesn't say. Fair. Usually, you like the underdog cats. Uh, it's favorite cats today. Yeah, that's um, not good. <laughs> all right. Well, mystery tiebreaker man is on the Pittsburgh Steelers with me. Yep. Um. Yeah. I mean, Cam <laughs> Carolina won because the, they're playing the Seattle Seahawks run defense. They couldn't stop. They knew they're running every down, and we got Blackshear running for ten yards of play. And I'm like, what is going on, Seattle? You know they're running up the middle. Like, just stop the run. They um, can't. It just yeah, it was very bad. And I think the Steelers have a good run defense, which means it's going to be on Sam Darnold. Um, and Pittsburgh's played Darnold a bunch over his career. All right, Cam, the Philadelphia yeah. Eagles going to Chicago to take on the Bears. The Eagles are only favored by eight and a half. Surprisingly, Chicago coming off a bye. Um, you can start this one. Do you like the home dogs? Eight and a yes. half points for a home dog, Cam. This is like Cam Stewart written all over it. It sure does. Give me the Chicago Bears here. Um, I know Philadelphia. I'm waiting for a letdown spot. Mm -hmm. It didn't come in a divisional game against the Giants. This is a perfect letdown spot for Philadelphia to take their foot off the gas. They're twelve and one football team. I think they win this game. The only issue I have with uh, Philadelphia is Hertz playing for an MVP, so he yeah. just keeps on giving her all the time. Without that, Chicago would be probably a very, very big play for me in this game. I know it's nuts. They've had time, and you saw what Fields did with his feet the last game. He was on fire. Give me Chicago plus eight and a half. Yeah, uh, I gotta get. I can't get on Chicago. I can't trust them with my money. Um, they do cover some of these games, but they automatically lose outright. And I think, like you said, Hertz is going for the MVP trophy. So I think they might juice an extra touchdown or two in this game. Um, and Fields is like a worse version of Jalen Hurts. Like he runs, but he just can't throw as well as Jalen. Um, so give me the Philadelphia Eagles to win this game like 42 to 27. Like I think it's going to be a real high scoring game. I think this total is also too low. But give me the Philadelphia Eagles. Let's see if you can guess where mystery tiebreaker man is on this one. Eagles. Correct. Uh, he loves the favorites. Uh, surprisingly, it's what he does. This week. Yeah, I don't know. Um, guys, uh, hey, <laughs> three, three for three on my side. Surprisingly, <laughs> it's either going to be real good or real bad for you guys. We'll see. All right, Cam. This is one of my. Uh, this will be one of my mineral picks this oh, week. Oh, good. Uh, so you, the New you Orleans can start Saints then, Drew. <laughs> hosting the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, Ritter getting the start for the Atlanta Falcons. The rookie finally getting some play. Uh, the Saints coming off a bye. Uh, favored by four at home. I love the Saints in this spot. You're giving me the New Orleans Saints defense with two weeks uh, to prepare for a rookie quarterback. I think this game's like 23 to three. Like I don't see Atlanta scoring any points in this game, Cam. Wow, you have a, you have a lot of confidence in a Saints team that really isn't that good. And watching Tampa Bay play and their collapse makes me think they're even worse than they are. That game was rigged. That game was rigged. That Tampa <laughs> New Orleans game. <laughs> Gamblers speak rigged. <laughs> yeah. Uh anyway, yeah, no, some games feel manipulated, but anyway, uh, you know what, Drew? I'm gonna take Atlanta. Give me four Ooh. points with Frank Falcon. Uh, I'm not as confident with you with this game. I think Britter can actually do enough. Uh, maybe he'll be inspired to play. You're right. The Saints are should take care of business in this game, but again, I'm getting four points in the divisional game. Maybe I'm an idiot, but I don't like the game. And when I don't like the game, I'll usually take the dog. Give me Atlanta. I think Ritter will do enough. He'll do good things and bad things, and they'll lose this game by three, and I'll cover by one. Well, I hope you're wrong, because I'm going to be uh, making a decent-sized play on the Saints here, Cam. Um, Mystery Tiger Command is with me on the New Orleans Saints. That's four for four, surprisingly. Do you feel, do you feel good about that? 
Uh, maybe we'll see. <laughs> maybe. Sometimes, we'll see. sometimes, sometimes right. he's yeah. on fire. Yeah, guy loves favorites this week. Frank, I'm Frank Falcon. What is he like? Uh, Francisco favorite. This guy's yeah, unbelievable. He likes, every, favorite. Yeah. he likes every favorite. It's we'll see about this one. Uh, the Dallas okay. Cowboys cam six and a half point favorites on the road going to Jacksonville. Take on the Jaguars. Um, sorry, four and a half. It dropped. It was yep. six. Uh, it's now four and a half. Um, reverse line movement, like we've said before. Everyone's betting on Dallas, and somehow the line is dropping. Um, let, tell me why the alarm bells are ringing, but I still don't know if I can bet on the Jags cam. Tell me why you can. Uh, I'm actually going to shock you in this game. I had the Jags last week. I'm off them. Dallas Ooh. played a horrible game. They played to the level of their competition. And the thing about the Jags, they look good last week. People are going to jump on these guys. Line's already gone down. I think Dallas blows these guys out. And, and the thing is, I could be very wrong on this game. I like Dallas a lot. I don't care about the reverse line movement, Drew. One thing I know is Houston – Dallas didn't even care in that game. That was a thing. It was a divisional game for yeah. Houston. Dallas has got bigger fish to fry. Jacksonville, people are thinking they're good. They're they're not a good football team. You know what? If that Dallas shows up in this game, they'll murder Jacksonville. That's what I'm betting on. Dallas by 10. I think they cover the four and a half. Cam, I'm doing it. I'm going reverse line movement. Not falling for it. Not falling for the trap. Give me uh, Johnny Jaguar, Jake Jaguar. I don't know what you want to call him. Um, the underdog, the reverse line movement. Four and a half. Johnny Jag. Think- yeah, I think they're alive yeah. to win this football game, Cam. I think Cowboys are coasting. They know the division's done, so they know they're locked into the fifth seed. I just don't think they want it as much. You see their players complaining after the game that, oh, I want the interception. I want the touchdown catch. It's the stats, the stats. Like, they don't even care about the win. Um, so give me the Jaguars here, Cam. I'm just doing this strictly based on gambling lore and, like, the rules around it, the reverse line movement, Cam. Uh, call me crazy, but that's what I'm doing. Um, Mystery Tiebreaker Man is on the Dallas Cowboys with you. So finally, Cam... Uh, of course, the favorite. Uh, yeah, favorite. This guy hasn't taken one dog today. We'll we'll talk about this on the on, on the second show that we do. There might be some changes in picks, but wow, I've never seen anything like this. The, the what do we got next? Cats at home, uh, the Camp Stewart special, and he goes against it. We'll see if yeah. your gut changes on Friday's show. It might. Um, all right, Arizona going to Denver to take on the Broncos. Russell Wilson still not out of concussion protocol, so we don't know if he's going to play. Um, they're two and a half point favorites against Colt McCoy. Unfortunately, Kyler Murray tore his ACL, it looks like. So he's going to be done for the season. So two backup quarterbacks, Cam. The Broncos by two and a half. Who do you like in this one? I'll take Denver. Uh, Rippon, I'll take him over. Colt McCoy. Actually, Arizona did some things in that game. I thought the referees really worked against Arizona in the New England game. I thought they got jobbed on a couple of calls. It was kind of ridiculous, actually. But they're not a good football team. I think that was the, their last stand. Denver. On the other hand, it's not great either, but they're at home and all they have to do is win by a field goal. I hate this game, Drew. Like, I really hate it. Give me a Bob Bronco, minus two and a half. Yeah, I don't know. This game is gross. Like, I will not be betting it. I will not be watching it, probably. Um, Why would you watch it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you got Tampa um, Bay and Cincinnati on at the same time in Tennessee and the Chargers. So Yeah, no, you're, giving you're, me, <laughs> you're giving me the Broncos defense to win by less than a field goal. Um, I got to go with that. Just the defense versus defense, Cam. Uh, and did you think this injury to Kyler Murray saved Cliff Kingsbury's job? It's an interesting question. I don't care what Murray did or what about him being hurt. Kingsbury is the worst coach in the league. Him and, like, honestly, his, his the kid thing is... He's Drew, bad. I don't know about the worst, but he's He bad. is one of the worst. Dare, like, it's not even debatable. And another thing is, the first plays of games are scripted. Cliff Kingsbury is, we talk about this on all the shows that I do, Drew. He's a good offensive coordinator or a college coach. He yeah. can't handle the NFL. Let's call it out for what it is. I don't think the players respect him. I think he sucks. And you know what? This guy came in. These so-called geniuses that everyone talks about. Oh, I know. Uh, it just makes me sick, these narratives. You know what? Kingsbury blows. Give me Denver. Actually, I want to bet this game now with after your your little Cliff Kingsbury thing. I'll tell you, man. I, this guy's just too much. I don't know. He should be fired regardless. Regardless of what. I just Kyler think Murray it might did. save his job because he might be like, oh well, my quarterback got hurt. Like, what do you Doesn't want? Doesn't matter. Like, the Cardinals are a four nine football team. They should be better than that. Look at the talent they have on their team. Oh, I agree fire. with you. I agree with anyway, you. Anyway, I'm uh, on maybe, Denver. Maybe don't give a seven year contract extension to your exactly. quarterback. Before. Yeah, but anyway. Yeah, who who basically you have to pay because he's playing video games to read the playbook. Like it's yeah. just the Cardinals did some really. Stupid stupid things this year but anyway all right the new england patriots camp going to vegas to take on the raiders josh mcdaniel's uh revenge spot i guess against bill belichick uh or maybe he just lets him win i don't know all i know is the raiders suck let's at holding win. The leads. what the hell are you talking about let him win no oh, I'm... this is a big game for the raiders even though they're five and eight they're going to show up in this game you, you don't think yeah, he wants show, to meet bill show belichick? up and blow a lead cam give me the give me the new england patriots in this game every time 10 times out of 10 uh, you're going to be Belichick against his old uh, OC. 
I just don't see how the Raiders even have a chance in this football game. Sure. I think it's New England all day, every day, uh, <laughs> 10 times on Sunday. Give me New England to blow them out. I don't know. I don't uh, care, Cam. Give me New England. I love you as a brother, Drew, but when you give me that confidence speech every time, I just, like, I love to go on the other side because I just, I don't know why you have confidence. New England, you're, so you're saying this is the game of the week, New England minus one and a half against the Raiders? The Raiders are a Jekyll and Hyde team. They might show up this week. You know what? I'll take the silver and black attack. Give me plus one and a half with the Raiders due to your confidence level. I may actually make it a mineral in the later shows. To, uh, <laughs> you think New England's going to blow these guys out? New England can't no, blow No, I just think anybody. the Raiders might be up 17 nothing, Cam, but it doesn't mean squat. Oh, I, just I know think that. I win this I football know. game outright, essentially, with the one and a half. And I think they do. I think they're the better football team overall. They, they have a better are. defense. Uh, not a better quarterback. I think Carr and Adams, they have a better offense on the other side. But Ken McDaniel's coach against his old coach's defense? I don't know. Um, I will say Patricia is probably the worst OC in football. Uh, I mean, he's not he's not supposed to be the OC. He should be a defense coordinator. It doesn't make any sense. But um, yeah. All right. Mystery Tiger Command is on the Raiders with you. Um, weirdly. First dog AFC, of the day. Yeah. A AFC one West fan. Uh, Mystery <laughs> Tiger Command. Um, all right. Moving on, Cam. Tampa Bay hosting the Cincinnati Bengals and Joe Burrow. Uh, three and a half point dogs at home. Cam, Tampa Bay should be losing this division. They didn't deserve to win that Saints game. Uh, crazy comebacks. Do they even have a chance to keep up with Cincinnati here? Like everyone seems like, oh, well, it's Tom Brady. Of course they have a chance. But I don't know if he's Tom Brady that we've seen of the old Tom Brady. Like it's Tampa Bay just seems like they're in shambles. Not good coaching, not a good team. Like I think the Bengals easily cover the spread. Like this is too short for me. I think so too. But this game, you know what? This is a game I might change. I'm going to take Cincinnati right now. But the more I think about it, this game is a trap. I think Tampa Bay might show up in this game, but you know what? I can't take them, Drew. It's almost personal. I, I don't like the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I can't lie to you. I, I don't like their football team, and sometimes it influences my betting. I do like Cincinnati, though. I could tell you the Bengals are getting better every week, and right now winning by four, you saw what they do, man. If that defense shows up in this game, any type of defense, Tampa Bay's done. The only way Tampa Bay True. shows up, if they get a running attack going against Cincinnati, I know it. Bengals by four. Maybe they just cover the number. It's three and a half. I don't love the game, though, Drew. Something you think this? some of these games reek? This one smells like very fishy to me, but I'll take the Bengals as of now. I love the Bengals in the spot cam. I see they got to score what to cover the spread? 24? Like the Bengals aren't scoring more, or the Buccaneers aren't scoring more than 20. Uh, um, I thought the shambles. Houston Texans would score three points last week, and they almost won the game. Their team total was like it's fair. 13, it's fair. and I was laughing my ass off thinking, like, oh, how are these guys? And they almost like – the NFL, Drew, right, what, what have we learned about the NFL? Nothing's easy. It changes like, week I, to week, it's true. Yes, it changes day, minute to minute. But I'll take Cincinnati, Drew. It's more personal because I, I don't like Tampa Bay. Give me the Bengals. And, and it's another cat, which uh, fits my recommendations. That's fair. Checks okay, so we are both on the Bengals to beat Brady and the Bucks. If Carolina yeah. wins their football game, Cam, their first place in the division against Pittsburgh. Um, what? I'm taking Carolina against I know. What a, what, a, what a crazy finish of the season it's going to be in the NFC South. Um all by right. the way, Drew, by the time we were taping, Carolina was one and a half. It's now two and a half. I locked it in at one and a half. I don't care. We'll talk it sounds, about this Sounds good to me. Sounds good to me. <laughs> uh, I, I like Pittsburgh even more now then. Cam, the Chargers are hosting the Tennessee Titans. The Titans coming off of a very disappointing performance against the Jacksonville Jaguars where Derrick Henry looked like he was going to run for 300 yards in the first half. And then all of a sudden it's like, no more Derrick Henry. Um, the Chargers coming off a huge win over the Miami Dolphins where Herbert proves everybody he's better than Tua Tonga Viola. I never questioned that. Um, I thought Miami would win the football game, though, because they just were, looked like they were better on paper and the Chargers were so banged up. But Staley uh, looking like he's going to save his job with that performance cam and Herbert played out of his mind. But everyone's going to be on the Chargers and I'm not getting on the Chargers wagon. It was one good game, Cam. I'm going back to the Tennessee Titans. Everyone's going to be like, oh, they struggled against Jacksonville, blah, blah, blah. Listen, yep. Chargers even still stopped Derrick Henry in this one. And I don't think they can. You know what it is, Drew? This is a game we might change as well. That's the thing. It's tough filming these things early and mm -hmm. giving our initial leans. But I'll tell you, you know I was on Chargers big time against uh, Miami that week. I had them on the money line as well. You're right. They're a wishy-washy football team. Right when you think they got it figured out, they'll let you down. But I'm taking them. I like what I saw with Herbert in that game, and I like what I saw with that defense. They rattled to it. As for Tennessee, you know what it is, Drew? It's a bigger problem now. This team's starting to fall apart. They were on fire, and now they're losing games. Like, they don't look right. And I'm going to take the Chargers minus three. It could change. I think the Chargers will do enough. I don't trust in Tannehill. I think they're going to have a game plan, uh, the Chargers. And they're, they're a seven and six football team, just like Tennessee. This is a monster game. Yep. Chargers are at home. I wish it was two and a half because it's probably going to be around that three or four. But, you know, as of now, I'll take the Lightning Bolts minus three. I think their offense can do enough. Yeah, it's going to be clo a close game camp. So I'm going to take the underdog here. Um, 
I wouldn't be shocked if either of these teams win this football game. It's just I'm going to go with the healthy side. Besides the offense, the Titans need some weapons. That's why their GM was fired because they traded A.J. Brown and they got Traylon Burks who can't even stay on the football field. Yeah. Um, but as long as Henry's there, I'll I'll just take the Titans' rush offense. I'm just hoping for a low-scoring game, 17-14 win for the Titans, even if they cover, like, it's whatever. Uh, but it will be close. Uh, Mystery tiebreaker man is on the – Los Angeles Chargers, Cam. Uh, You're right. This guy loves the the Western Division. The AFC Raiders, West. Chargers, Chiefs is his favorite team. Hmm, we're learning a lot about Mystery Man. Bagman likes the AFC West. Yeah, surprisingly. All right, moving on. The did he Washington, have Denver too? Did he have Denver uh, or Arizona? We were both on the same side, but let me see. He did have Denver, surprisingly. Every team uh, in the division. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, um, next. Yeah, the Giants going to Washington take on the Commanders. The Giants or the the Washington is four and a half point home favorites. Cam, uh, the public is on the Giants. Washington coming off their bye. I just don't know uh, which side. This is going to be a gross Sunday night this, football you know game. What this this feels probably like? decides who makes the play makes the playoffs out of these two teams, though. This feels like you're going to give me four and a half with the Giants and take it. This this game feels like a bait line. Why wouldn't you make this like three and a half forks, four and a half? Yeah, it's it, a lot. It's you know what it is. It's it, it feels like a way to try to get some early giant money here. I'm I I don't think I'm going to fall for this. I might be stupid and wrong, but you know what? I'm going to take the Washington Commanders to win this game by a touchdown. Uh, I think they're a better team than the Giants right now. The Giants are showing their true colors. They're not very good. The Eagles blew them out, and they they started the year great, but I don't think I think Washington's better. And I like Heineke. I know he's going to make some mistakes. That's what he does, but he's also a gamer. Uh, I think they can win this game by six or seven points. Give me uh, the condoms, commanders, commies, whatever. Give me Washington. Yeah, Cam, I'm going to be with you there. I think Washington wins this football game outright. Uh, and I think it's by more than four and a half points. Uh, yeah. Everyone's going to be betting on the Giants because they started six and one. They're not six and one anymore. That's not their team. Uh, they're seven, five and one. Right. Um, and I think Washington's a better football team overall. I think Heineke is better than Daniel Jones. And if I had to pick one of these teams to fall out of the playoffs, it's going to be the New York Giants, not the Washington Commanders. So give me Washington cam uh, and Chase Young being back is huge for that defense as well. Um, so, yeah, we are both on Washington in the spot where, I mean, usually we would take a plus four and a half point underdog it just though, feels in the wrong. game. It just feels wrong. You're right. Yeah. Um, all right. Baker Mayfield coming off that crazy. I don't Thursday want to, I comeback. don't want to hear it. I don't want um, everyone hear it. giving him so much credit. I played I'm like on the junk. He made one good throw. That was the Raiders. Made... The Raiders blew that. It was nothing to do with Baker Mayfield in my mind. Kid. That's the thing, Drew. Like did see the narratives people put out. Have you watched the game? So what did Baker Mayfield do? He had two good plays the whole game. Other than that, he sucked. He even said he after the game, hard. oh, I was surprised. The Raiders played the same coverage three straight plays. So we <laughs> threw a touchdown. Yeah, that sounds like the Raiders are dumb, not Baker Mayfield making an amazing play. Um, what do you do here, though? Do anyways, yeah, seven with so wait, the Packers are seven and a half point favorites at home uh, in the cold. Aaron Rodgers coming off a bye. Christian Watson's been unbelievable. Eight touchdowns in his last four games. Um, Camp, give me the Packers here. Uh, I don't care it's what seven, Baker Drew. Mayfield did. I'll, actually, I'll give you seven. Oh, it's down to seven now. Okay, yeah. so give, give me uh, the Packers here. I think they win this game by like 20 plus. Uh, I think Baker Mayfield, the party comes to an end. It was a nice two day. Oh, my God. How did he do that against the Raiders? But. You're not going to Lambeau Field and doing that on a one week of playing time. You know what, Drew? I, I can't believe I'm doing this. This game just screams dog to me, but I'm with you. I'm taking Ooh. the Packers, and I don't know what's wrong with my brain today. I obviously didn't get a good night's sleep or I'm rattled because I would never lay seven with Green Bay. But You don't trust Baker. I, it's smart. That Know what it is? It's just I don't – that Rams team, you're right. The, the whole thing about the Raiders was the Raiders imploded. It wasn't the Rams doing anything good. Like the and as but Green Bay, they have problems covering numbers, Drew. They're they're five and eight ATS, mm -hmm. two and three ATS at home, three and seven in their last ten against the spread. But you know what? I just think Aaron Rodgers maybe figures it out this week and they win by 10. Give me the Packers. I hate this game as well. We're we're gonna have a lot of changes on the on the on the fix it show. Like these are leans right now, so I'll go with Green Bay. Give me some cheese, please. Yeah, I mean, I don't think this will be one of my fixing games, Cam, because I I love the Packers in this spot. It might be one of my best bets. Stay tuned to the Friday show to find out. But I just, you can't trust Baker Mayfield in this spot. Um. So yeah. All right. Well, before we get out of here, Cam, we'll remind everyone that the lines are powered by Sports Interaction. And uh, though I am devastatingly out of my survivor pool, there are some still some people that are alive. So Cam, give me your three picks if you had to go on paper right now for who you would take in your survivor pools. Let's assume everyone's used the Bills and the Chiefs and the Eagles. And the, fit, and the Eagles. Yeah, okay. So. Uh, so I'd say the, let's let's Saints. say they got who? Probably the Saints. Ooh, you take you, you're on a well, you're on I, Frank what, Falcon. Though. I am, I, but I, I, I'm, you're asking me for a survivor pool. Do, do, do you trust the Chargers against Tennessee? Everyone's used Green Bay. How have you not used Green Bay? Yeah, you know I think what? Bengals I got is... one for you, Drew. I got. You know what? We should have saved. You know what? Moving forward, we should do this on the Friday show to put it all together in a yeah, nice yeah. little package. 
I'm just saying. But anyway, we're doing this on the fly. The Washington Commanders are my bold survivor pick. I like it. I like it. If you have San Fran available, I would like them against Seattle too. Yes, but I'm um, actually, I think Washington's going to beat the Giants. And like that San Fran Seattle game smells a little bit fishy, even though we both lean San Francisco. I'll take Washington. I think they cover the number. So it's a bold pick. Give me uh, those commies again. <laughs> All right. Uh, you heard it from Cam. <laughs> take the Washington commies as your survivor pick this week. Yikes. Uh, thanks for watching our week 15 spread show. Don't forget. Best bets, props, picks, and all this fun stuff will be coming out Friday morning on the SPN YouTube channel and wherever you find your podcast. Don't forget to download, rate, and uh, five-star review this podcast. Uh, give us some nice comments. It always helps us in the replies. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Once again, I'm Drew Livingstone. That's Cam Stewart, powered by Sports Interaction. We will see you on Friday. This has been Drew and Stu. Presented by Sports Interaction, Canada's Sportsbook. Follow Drew at Producer Drew and Cam at Cam Stewart Live. May the winners be yours and all of the best bets hit.